Uh oh, I think that's shark. Shark, shark, shark. Yeah. Hey everybody, how we doing today? So we are out here again at it. Uh, brought the crab shirt today, and once again forgot the crab net and my hat because the hat I took inside to film the last couple of videos about the hats, and I left it inside. And if it's not in my car, it's not coming. So uh, without the dip net, I'm still doing okay. Got my first victim. The new strategy is, is I've got the remnants of my chum out there as an attractant. Then I've got my pinfish rod and I put a half a chunk of uh, squid on there. And I've just got that pinned into the sand. And then what I do is when a crab comes, I get him to grab hold of the squid. And then I slowly bring them up and put them on top of the uh, net so they grab hold of the net while they're eating. And then I go from underneath bring them right up to the surface and then flick them into the kayak. So that's the new system. <laughs> Hopefully I just get two or three crabs and then uh, pick up some grunts and then head out to the outlet. So odd, but true. All right, we got this first guy here that we're going to declog, get him in the bucket and then uh, we'll get to work. I think there's another one. Oh, another one's on. Oh, I guess I better get him quick. So this is how we're going to do it. Once it starts eating, and it's going to start struggling. Oh, don't let go. And then what I want to do is to get them onto the chum bag so that they hold on to it. Just like that. Last time I had, oh, it took the squid. Dang it. It ripped it. No, you son of a, oh, you bad dog I just had it on the hook so it pulled it off I was messing around dang it that was a perfect one too well I took a look around I couldn't find any mullet forgot that blue crab net and lost half my squid I don't want to risk my other half pinfish has been, been a, a pain in the butt lately but fortunately the good old grunts have been providing enough action to get me some bait quick enough so we've got one crab and a bucket full of grunts so I say we head out to the outlet catch the end of the outgoing tide it's still too early for the uh, evening bite because it reverses before the uh, sunset so I think this weekend it'll be outgoing tide at night time so I'll be perfect conditions and might even see the uh, polar worm hatch again so I'm just kind of wasting time Super low tide out in the whole Atlantic side, so can't flatfish. So, make and do. Well, we got a tarpon on. <laughs> Just not ready for it. All right, we're on, but I'm not ready for it. I don't have my pedals in. What's that? Are you still tied off or are you just letting drag it? I'm dragging, letting me drag me. Ugh. Not ready. Not ready, not ready, not ready. That took all of about one cast, one drift. And it was actually uh, two or three different tarpon came up after this one bait. The one got it, dropped it. The other one came up, dropped it, got it. I was trying to get the GoPro up. <laughs> and then I was talking to Johnny there and this one finally took it and hooked himself. Of course, I didn't have the pedals in, nothing. Oh, that's right. Let's catch up with these guys. I want a close up. All right, now 
flower clean. He didn't go too far, so. This was on the grunt. There he is, sucking air. Yeah, I totally wasn't ready for this guy. I always gotta take one minute and get pre-prepped before I start throwing a bait out, but never works that way. What's that? That rod, man. It's a badass rod. <laughs> yeah. It's got a lot of flex to it, so it's good. It's my uh, $30 cheapy rod. break off in front of the camera right what's that in front of the camera yeah it doesn't do what i ask Uh oh, I think a shark. Shark, shark, shark. Oh. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I see blood. Yeah. Big old pool of red stuff. <laughs> yeah, there would be the spot. Scales and blood. What's that? I mean, you got to fight and try to get the kids to see YouTube and all that, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you had one as well. Yeah, that's good enough. Rather they don't die, though. Okay. I'd rather they don't die, though. All right. Now that we got over that initial tarp in there, a little bit of a surprise there. Let me show you what I'm doing. Uh, got one bobber under the crab. Got one bobber with a uh, grunt. I'm tied off to the uh, PVC pipe that's right at the edge and I'm hanging over the edge. Realistically though, I would be better off if the kayak was right on the edge because I like to drift the bait right along this drop off in the channel. So you can see that dark area there, that's the edge of the, uh, the flats and then the white sand is where it starts dropping down into the channel. Uh, what we're wanting to do is I'm going to be drifting a bait down the middle and then way out to the outlet there where mainly the uh, tarpon are going to be setting up waiting for food to come by. But since I've got that other rod set up, I'm just going to put a bait out maybe 20 feet just down current from me and just let it sit there. Now that I'm looking at it that I'm in this kind of a weed line, I think I'm going to just sit the crab and let that just drift out right behind me there. I'll do one drift with the crab first let it go out and swing out and sit in this eddy area and then the uh, grunt i'm going to cast out and let drift way down to the end there so i've got both sections working and then as you can see the crab there it just looks like what it would do in the current it'll 
uh, stick with the weed area there. Then what's going to happen is why I'm doing this now is because we're right about the time for the uh, the tide change. So it's going to slow down drastically, stop, and then reverse. Those tarpon will move up when that current slows down because otherwise this is a raging river and they got to expend a lot of energy to try to sit here. So they end up going pretty far out there. But when that tide stops and starts slowing down, they'll move up because they could just kind of easily amble around. The current is still flowing in the center so that they'll still have food coming to them, but it's a lot easier for them. And then the presentation's a lot slower so they can take their time and eye things out. So that's what we're gonna try to take advantage of. If this current was really raging, I couldn't really do much of a short drift here because it would end up just popping on the surface. But because these edges die first, and the center of the current stays active, these become kind of eddy areas and they'll just swim along both sides there. So it's kind of a bit better. This side's a little bit slower. That side's a deeper cut. Um, I didn't bring my good anchor. That's why I'm setting up over here. Plus the wind is coming from this way. So it's pushing us out. So everything's a lot easier, but that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start by, let that guy just sit there. I'm going to do one drift with this crab. Make sure it's all weeded off. Put that out there. Oh, see right there, it's tarping right there along that edge. That's why it's not necessarily always the center of the channel being the best. These edges are where they make their way up there and that's why also i want to put that bait right in that edge there perfect example for you but i know there's a school of tarpon sitting on that center area there gobbling stuff up so i just want to see if they're going to be more interested in a crab or a grunt and then i'm feeding line okay because i don't want any drag on that crab if i put any drag on it it's automatically going to be kicking up to the surface Right now, it should be drifting with the current right below that bobber, so it'll have some depth to it. Now I'm just going to feed it and feed it and feed it. Just make sure there's no drag on it. And then when that line starts ripping, then I just let it run, let it run, count to three, count to five, and then close, snap that bell shut, and hopefully you get that circle hook. Okay, so I've got the crab just sitting not too far out there, 20, 25 feet. It's going to be just sitting in that current, but as this uh, tide starts reversing, it's going to get start sinking down. Uh, now I've got this grunt. I'm going to put him out, do a nice little drift with him. And this will be a longer drift that I'll let run for a little while, pretty far out like I did the crab get through that uh, middle strike zone there and see what happens same deal just let it drift no tension i have it nose hook so if i do stop the uh, bobber it'll still stay upright and be able to swim and look uh correct in the current i could also do it in the back but that tends to uh, put a lot of strain on them when i'm reeling it back in since it's in the mouth then it'll uh, be able to swim forward and just pull naturally all right something's got it oh there it goes there it goes all right off we go A little bit better prepared this time. Not much better, but better. Oh, jumping, still on. Yep, get this guy in. This was on the grunt. All right, let's run him down. Out of the way. 
try not to feed the sharks on this one. Of course, got him stupid crab stuck in the Mirage Drive. There we go. Try to catch up to him as quick as possible so he's not struggling and track sharks. I'm not putting very little pressure. I want to do super quick releases on these guys. I don't want to kill any more. I'm going to put tight drag. Get this guy in or break him off. So he don't get eaten. Come on. Or get on the flats. Oh man. So I'm not putting any tension, I just want to get right on top of them. Then stick them. And try to get them up here. Ugh. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's what I want. Uh, uh, another one and, uh, and break off. I got the drag pretty well down. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Nice. If you want to break off, break off. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, I want to try to break this guy off. Uh, can. Watch that damn tail. Watch that tail. Watch the tail. There he goes. Wow, oh, brutal. All right. That's how you do a quickie. <laughs> All right, we're set back up again. Broke my outrigger. <laughs> Still works though. 
Uh, tide is definitely slowing down. You can see that far edge is a bit more ripply. That's the last of this outgoing section there. So all this is just barely any movement. It's just waiting to uh, turn back around. The wind is kind of affecting it, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna have this bobber just sitting 15 feet out in front of me with that crab. And then I'm gonna launch this guy out, which is the uh, grunt. And do it all over again and just try to sit this bait right at the outlet there where they're I've been getting all these bites in the same spot got him nose hooked let him free swim Okay, the tide is officially stopped and it should be reversing. I couldn't even get the base out to drift out to the outlet, so not worth it sitting out here anymore. When that current stops, that's basically just shutting off the food to the fish. So they some might hang around, but I think a lot of them just disperse. So when we're fishing, we want congested bunch of fish in one narrow passage that we can keep drifting uh, baits through. So while I've got time, I'm gonna run up closer to the uh, basin and get closer to the launch, put some baits out there and try to catch the, uh, the magic hour up in the basin. Oh, broke me off. Crappers. Stupid toothy critter I think is eating all my baits. Yep. Don't eat my other one. And look at that. Kudas took out both baits just like that. I am going to F this guy up real quick. I have something for him. Those freaking barracudas just killed every one of my baits. So I've got this paddle tail, jig head, wire. I'm going to smack one of those little bastards. I mean, literally killed all five of my baits in just a couple of minutes. 